then we have got the deployment models when could i also heard of private cloud community cloud public cloud and hybrid cloud what actually is that it's quite confusing right let's go for a trip assume that you recently joined an organization called tcs you are a wonderful system administrator or a virtualization administrator you recently joined in one of the key roles in tcs organization in tcs they already have the data center virtualized okay on the data center they also got virtualization implemented your manager have come to you and said hey venkat it is nice to have you in our team it's wonderful so i want to show a value add of you joining the team to the management so can you please do some some uh, value add service can you can you take an initiative and show something extra that you would do compared to the team then we are we are highly motivated we just get to the i mean we just wanted to do something and prove get an appreciation or applause from our team or our manager that's what we try to and that's off a team should be so i go to our ticketing system i downloaded the tickets history of last 6 months or one year and i analyze the tickets i understand 70% of the work that your team the virtualization team is doing is a repetitive tasks only the 30% is unique of the 60% if you see majority of the tasks are server provisioning server decommissioning capacity adjustment tickets like processor addition processor removal memory adding memory removal hard disk expansion kind of tasks you've given a idea to your manager saying sir to start with why don't we have a self service portals where the teams would serve their requests on their own for example if they need servers instead of submitting a ticket to a server team i mean to a virtualization team they will do it on their own where we going to provide a self service portal your manager said yes do a poc show me the results and you will be given permissions to pro- to roll it out into the production then you've actually developed when I mean, you sat with your development team you developed um a small form into your ticketing okay you just going to get an orchestrator orchestrator is nothing but an automation software and you also have got a ticketing system so there is a url portal.tcs.com portal.tcs.com when you hit that url it will redirect to this form ticketing system there will be a form that asks about what is your name what team you belong to what you want a server server of what configuration windows two processors 8 gb ram what will be the username and password you submit the details once you submit the details into into this form it immediately give that as a input to the orchestrator and the orchestrator is going to create a virtual machine here as the the form already took the details of yours it is going to send a mail trigger a mail once the provisioning is done hey your server is ready this is the ip address and you anyways given the username and password is proceed to use it done you have give, you have shown this results to your manager he is quite happy he rolled it across the departments of the organization saying today fourth anybody needs a server you don't come to server team but hit this url portal.tcs.com earlier what if a dba need a server they are submitting a ticket and ticket has got a sla of 4 days so they just have to wait for 4 days for a server to be created so that they'll proceed but now if a dba needs a server they just go to the portal and create a server on their own in 5 minutes it is ready or 10 minutes it is ready instead of waiting for 4 days or maybe more than that now the server is ready in 10 minutes and they are proceeding with their work essentially to the organization it is benefiting a lot so every other team started using it but soon you run into a problem that 
if a team needs four servers they are deploying 10 servers that way soon the data center capacity is exhausted is over then what you you happen to shoot a mail to all the departments saying sir your teams have been over provisioning the servers that can you please ask them to release the servers that are not hosting the business applications they they are not hosting the production applications then you get a nice reply from the manager saying buddy every single server that we have is a production critical we cannot release them back and what to do you cannot extend the capacity because as you extend the capacity that will be over again in 2 days but you will have to do that again and forever that will be continued but you need to find a way to gain control over the provisionings when you happen to attend one of the sessions like this you come across a tool called charge back or pay as you go there is a tool from vmware also that's called charge back charge back is basically a, a, a pricing sheet okay so if you need one processor 1 gb ram it is going to cost you 10 rupees if you need two processor 2 gb ram it is going to cost you 20 rupees right one processor 2 gb ram maybe 15 rupees so there is a price card in charge back and for one hour this is the price two hours so you you just fill in the details integrate that charge back with your virtualization platform when every server is created that is created with a department id and the team at the end of the month the charge back is triggering a nice report what department is using how much of services so what is their bill so database team your bill is 10000 dollars please pay it the so testing and qa 5000 dollars wonderful you pay it so you just forward that mail to the respective department heads ask them to pay it as long as the individual departments are paying you have no problem in extending the capacity now they going to ask their teams hey why do you need these many servers if you really need a server provide me justification for every single server that you have so either you going to get the capacity back or you going to get the money that is good but essentially you've got the control over your data center that went very well so if they need capacity you are able to do it and you have tcs being a a, a, a mnc they have data centers in india and and rest of the world as well so if they wanted to create a server in in other locations they are able to do it now just fall back and remember the five essential qualities of the cloud computing and see the first one is on demand self service do we have it in our delivery yes If a DBA needs a server, he just hit a URL called portal.tcs.com. That's all. He will be able to create a server on his own. It's ready, on demand, self-service on his own. The other one is rapid elasticity. Yes, if if they want to scale to a good extent, they will be able to do it because as long as they are paying. server team or virtualization team find it no difficult to extend the capacity resource pooling well of course if the teams wanted to deploy the servers in different locations they just give the details into the form but the server will be created so you have that pay as you go yes your usage is being accurately measured and at the end of the month the bill is generated you have all of them and one last thing is broad network access we don't have it because portal.tcs.com is only accessible within tcs organization but if you come outside of that organization and open internet if you hit that url it will not work because it is meant for the organization only please understand this a portal.tcs.com is not accessible on the internet because the purpose of it is to be private it is local to their organization it's supposed to be local it's supposed to be accessible on the lan 
of the TCS organization. So we call it as private cloud. Please understand the five essential qualities and we just do not have the broad network access. So it is a private cloud. That's called the private cloud. Then coming to the community cloud. Say today the whole world is suffering because of the COVID-19. Let's say hospital organizations like Apollo, Kims and NIMS, the top healthcare organizations in India wanted to form as a community and to, to work together so that they can come up with the medicine very soon, quickly. So for these three companies to work together, they need a common IT services because they wanted to collaborate, work so that they can bring medicine quickly. So you build a data center, you ensure the other four qualities are in there, but when it comes to broad network access, earlier in TCS example, the network connection is open to only one organization, but now the network connections are open to three organizations and three organization form as a community for a purpose and that's the community cloud. So the small difference is network connections. So you open the network connection to three organizations and that's the community cloud. And when it comes to the public cloud, well, public cloud, as the name says, it is meant for everybody. It's supposed to be accessible by everybody on the internet. TCS, sorry. Uh, you've got Azure dot Microsoft.com. You've got AWS.Amazon.com. You've got Cloud.Google.com. So these are all the public cloud platforms. They're supposed to be accessible on the internet. They're supposed to be accessible on the internet. So we are accessing it. So we have five essential qualities in the delivery. And that's simple it is. Right? We've got Google Cloud. We've got Microsoft Azure Cloud because we are we are able to access them because they are public cloud platforms. They are supposed to be accessible by everybody on the internet. Then hybrid cloud. Let's say fall back to the first example of TCS.com. Right. So TCS is already having their private cloud environment. And they've got a new project. They've got a new project for another 500 servers. They've got a, uh, just a second. So let's fall back to the first example, TCS. They already have a private cloud and they have four essential qualities, one less. It is all good and they've got a new project to host 500 servers, 20 databases, 100 terabytes of a storage. So for this capacity, you cannot accommodate this in the existing private cloud environment. So keeping the timeline of the project, you just hosted that into AWS and between private and AWS, there is a VPN connection that you have laid. At any point of time, a server from AWS can be moved to on-premises or vice versa. At a given point of time, when you are using more than one cloud platforms, a combination of private and public or private and community or community or public, any two is called hybrid cloud. That's private, community, public, and hybrid. At a given point of time, when you're using more than one cloud platforms, that's called the hybrid cloud. 